Hello everybody, Brian here from Labs.net. Today I am going to talk about uh, CFDs uh, regarding the signals and what you can expect in the packages, how to download them and how to interpret them, how to use them. First things first, every six hours we will send out signals uh, for CFD. It'll be in the same format as this. It'll just, instead of crypto, it'll say CFD with a link and potentially a link to the actual zip file. Once you download the zip file, you will get a package and it will look and contain files like this. So we'll go through those in a minute. And how do you get to this point? Well, all you gotta do is come under the analytics dashboard, look for CFD analysis tables and charts systematically generated. And all you gotta do is open her up and what will happen is you will get access to this page, fill in your details right here, your email, download, and then you can download that at any time. Also, as I said, you will get CFDs, uh, the latest batch, sent to you every six hours, every day. So let's talk about the files, what's in them. So first thing about CFDs is they, some of them don't have a lot of liquidity. So you may see the pricing not change for hours on end, four hours, eight hours, I have seen it that long. So you will have to go through the uh, rank file to see the price difference. So let me show you that. In here, uh, we have uh, some PNG charts, graphic charts. We also have um, also P uh, Microsoft stuff. A couple of CSV files, comma separated value, as well as doc, Word docs, and um, Excel somewhere in there. There should be Excel right here. Okay, so let me show you um, first things first, the ones to be kind of uh, cautious on. You will get these um, occasional. Uh, charts the volume on an hourly profit now again this data comes from Oanda some of these are not very liquid so be aware of that you can easily uh, capture that in the ranking uh, Excel file I'll show you in a minute but these are the hourly moves um, in these uh, in the CFDs and do pay attention to that the prices may not move because there's not enough liquidity to move them so they can get kind of stuck for hours on end as i said so be very very aware of that also we ha also have the volume as well and this will show you this radically changes depending upon the time of day you're looking at this so obviously if you're looking at when the european markets are open your volume for european uh, indices stock indices will be up if it's the u.s markets are open probably the u.s indices will be the dominant volume and sometimes it may be um also Hong Kong, let's say, uh, for Asian time frames. So right here, Hong Kong is leading the volume. Number two is NASDAQ, 100 in yellow. And then number three is US top 30. Everything else I don't really pay attention to, but uh, let me show you the rank uh, Excel file now. Okay, so this is the Excel file. So you can easily load it up in some program that reads the Excel. In my case, I'm using LibreOffice. You can definitely use uh, Microsoft or Google Docs as well. So I've shown this before in the in the um, Forex examples as well. You can do different sorts to interpret different things. So for instance, if you want to see if there's any buying signals at this time, again, these files do generally get updated every hour and you can go in and download them at any time you want. So uh, you'll be able to capture any, right now there's no buy signals, there's no sell signals. Uh, there can be a volume, as I said, is a big factor in these things. So. You can sort by volume on all of them. How many do we have here? I think we have we have uh, 34, 33 assets here to choose from. So I'm not gonna get into what they are, uh, except one by one. So let me just sort these for some kind of use. So let's say if I wanna sort by uh, volume column I, uh, so just go sort by column I, so we can see the uh, by volume. So here you can see the NASDAQ 100 leads, top US 
30, SPX 500, followed by the Deutsche. And uh, now, hold on. Did I, again, did I do this? Did I mess this up? So we want call. I'm always doing this. Column I. My apologies. So, oh boy. We're not starting off all that well here. Okay, so we want column I. Column I. Hello. Okay, so descending and okay. So here we go. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. But um, you can pretty well see that the leaders would be uh, NASDAQ 100 followed by probably uh, the Hong Kong, um, so on and so forth. So you can also sort by uh, a volume, momentum, uh, standard deviation, which is another way of saying volatility, slope, and some statistical information on the R value, P value. This is the closing price. So here you can use this to monitor which, uh, that's the latest closing price, most up to date. So if that has not changed hour by hour, uh, it's safe to say that the there's not enough of liquidity to move that um, CFD according to what is being downloaded from OANDA. So let me try this again. I'm gonna try to sort by momentum on column J. Let's see if that works. So the momentum, is this right? So we can clearly see which ones are the most profitable in order. The US followed, like I said, the NASDAQ 100, US 30, SPX 500, the Deutsche, 30 and then the Japanese 225 in that order uh, measured by slope but you can or sorry by momentum but you can also measure by slope as well um, so let's see if we can do that so slope is column n so hopefully this should work in the world of of uh, Libre office so we have comment n there column n okay so momentum so now we are sorting on by slope here. So yes, yeah, so now you can clearly see by slope that the Hong Kong 33, Japanese 225, and the Indian 50 of the top two were the most profitable, the strongest slope. So those are quite interesting to show that the uh, Asian, Japanese, then the Indian 50, then the NASDAQ. So in my mind, since this has been generated that uh, Asia, the Asian indices are outperforming against the US. So take note on that. Uh, also, if you want to sort on uh, volatility, uh, you want to do that on standard deviation called K. So let's just do that as a last example. So this is a very useful file. So here we can see which ones are the most volatile, which kind of makes sense. Uh, natural gas, then oil, then Brent crude. So what we have here, the top, the most volatile are natural gas, uh, West WTI oil, Brent crude oil, then sugar in that order of most volatile. So again, these can be uh, useful. Now from there, there's this file. And we also do, well, let me just keep that open for now. So in here we have the usual Word document reports. Uh, right now I've shown you the, what's profitable by volume uh, and um, by profitable as well, the C CFD bar, our profit, that one as well. Now, when you look at the, um, current profitable by slope, meaning this guy right here, as I did that, uh, we had Hong Kong 33 as the steepest slope. So that, again, that's profitable. Um, and that had the most volume as well. And that would make sense because it's two things going for it is that obviously it shows that that's the strongest profitable right now out of the selection of all the D CFDs out of Oanda on top of uh, would make more sense as well because Oanda is 
uh, technically based out of Hong Kong, so I guess they're imagine there's more uh, Hong Kong or even Chinese clients, so that's probably why there's more volume on Hong Kong as well. Just the things that I'm uh, speculating here. Okay, so there's that. So now we have all of these different uh, Word documents that we can look at. So here we have some shorting opportunities in this FX short docx. So let's take a look at that. Now, um, so again, these these are usually updated every hour, so it's pretty good. Um, typically, how it works is no different than the forex. We have the group mean, as well as we have the volatility. So our volatility for the group is 0 0.006. Meanwhile, our group uh, volume is 203. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, we got the FX shorts again. We did this before. We want our CFD shorts. So right here. So I can tell right there that is blank, no shorting opportunities. But we do have uh, long. Again, that is pretty well blank. Um, so we have two files to look at, CFD long based on trend and the other filtered on volume. So why don't we look up based on trend? See what it says here. Alrighty. So depending upon liquidity, these CFDs can be pretty profitable uh, depending upon what happens in the markets globally. So once again, we have in order here, the uh, US 10 year um, and then again, we have our usual uh, cross sell signals. Some of them are valid, like this one to here was a valid move. Downward trend. We have some more open opportunities. We need to track the pricing to make sure that this is a liquid uh, CFD. I don't think it is, just so you know. So some of these may be useful to trade uh, every six hours, maybe once a day. Very long-term uh, strategies for these guys. So again, you can see that it's pretty close to being evenly distributed, positive versus negative uh, returns on a daily basis. Here you can see we had some periods of up moves. So we, we could have made some nice, a little bit of cash here between uh, November and January, and now it's gone into this trading range and overbought as well with the RSI. So uh, of course you want to look at the um, moves, four day move here is pretty good, that came back with a three day negative move, goes into a short, uh, Tra uh, trade range and then it seems to be caught up in that but you got to really watch these but you can clearly see the momentum's gone quite positive recently on this USB tenure um, but once again you're not seeing our usual harmonics and candle patterns uh, I think that's due to which is these are just not there's not enough data to generate any of those because it's not liquid so you have to again you have to be kind of Careful them, but the moves can be really extreme if you get it the right calls in your favor. So this one is the gold silver ratio as a defense play. This is quite good when the markets go crazy. Um, you can see it's been a slight uptrend, so uh, this can be useful. But again, it's very tight. But when the markets go crazy, uh, negative, this particular CFD does quite well. Again, this is silver, gold against silver. Or, or one or the other, I always get these two confused, but you can see here, we have more negative moves quite clearly as the markets do better, this does not do well. And again, we're in a, um, a during the summer, it did well a little bit. Surprisingly, it didn't come up as fast um, when the market melted down between October and December. Uh, so, I don't know how to gauge that one, but it's a good defense play. See here, we had some nice up moves as well. All right, so um, standard deviation. This is uh, Deutsche 10-year bond. 
Again, this is a defense play. It is pointing up. Uh, this has got a little bit more um, opportunity here, but it currently on the Fibonacci definitely is overvalued. Uh, more negative moves uh, daily. Uh, but you can see here, this is quite interesting. From November, it's been nothing but on a nice trend up. Quite good, quite good. Same with the 90-day outlook. And, uh, but it seems to be quite volatile. These are definite long-term trading opportunities. Um, okay, so that is based on trend. So I only like to do the top three usually. So let's do the ones on volume because obviously the ones that have the better volume do better. So let's check out that. And Okay, so these are at least 100K. So um, here's our standard uh, group mean and our um, volatility mean. So right now, in terms of volatility, the WTI is definitely twice as volatile. Um, so this will be an interesting one to see how this does. Okay, so I don't know if you guys follow oil, but here in this time range, it's run up, come back down. It may go back up. We don't know, uh, but it's trending up. That's good. That's pretty good. Um, this has opened up a little bit on the Fibonacci level. Um, some more positive reviews here. That's pretty good. Um, sudden rundown, and it seems to be coming up. Um, 90 day outlook and see here is undervalued throughout November and it had a really long so this may be a bottoming process cannot say WTI but it's in a range bound but it's hard to tell if it's gonna go up or not again the harmonics and the candles are not here to help out so here we have the Deutsche 30 um, coming up a little bit and it came back down trending up that's good um, again very tight Fibonacci level it's really hard to trade um, this seems to have more negative uh, daily returns a steady trend down but it is coming back look at the momentum it is positive here the RSI is being pushed up so there may be some potential here and again, these are the kind of bars we want to see. That's a nice bar, obviously. So now the U.S., let's just do this as one last. Um, the USD, I uh, can't remember what the, this seems to have less volatility than the group. Uh, not, a, not as high volume. But here, that's a nice buy signal. If you caught that, you'd be doing pretty good here you know that the trend's looking good because it's positive again it's overvalued it did dip and that's probably why we have a new recent rally for uh, january 2019 uh ooh, i would say there just slightly in the last little while there has been more negative returns but it is bouncing back uh since january and it's had a nice tear as you can see but the thing is what you want to look for in these Again, is that RSI because it is approaching 70, so it will probably drop back, but it may already starting to happen because the momentum starting to taper off as more people get out of uh, the U.S. market. So it's starting to, the 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 rise the, the 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 rise isn't as strong, but on the other hand, recently it's looking okay, and then we could go on. Let's check out this Hong Kong 33. So uh, comparative 171 for Hong Kong 33. This is the Hong Kong's definitely got more volume. Uh, 008. See the vol volatility comparison between that and Hong Kong. Hong Kong's an interesting one because you can make some nice easy money with it. Uh, it's not. Oh, actually, I would say it is more volatile. But you can see all the false positives, but it is moving up, trending up, good. And it's breaking trends, so this may be a time to get in as a classic entry. 
right here it's uh, it's in that golden zone still so it's still worthwhile to look at um, evenly distributed on the returns here it's got a nice 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 run up but again uh, here's what we got to look out for it's approaching that 70 uh, it's still positive momentum but it, you can clearly see on the 90 it's just had a nice run up still positive in momentum just touching on 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 the 70 rsi and you can clearly see this is this is on a 30 day so uh there you go and the nasdaq's got a nice strong slope as well so hopefully you can kind of work with these and only work with the cfds i would recommend probably on this one only on based on upon volume and uh just use those ones that get listed in this report. Let's see what else we got in this package. Um, the usual um, PNG Fibonacci that we've already looked at. Um, most profitable. I haven't really shown these reports in detail, but they may be already included in the in the Word docs I've just shown. So here we can get a snapshot on what's happening between each one. So uh, you can somewhat see which ones look good to trade. The other factor you need to always factor the spread costs. I've already explained this in the Forex uh, example usage, but let's just take a look at these anyways. So this is the, the bid and ask, so let's check this out. So here, these are tight. There's virtually no spread cost at all because you can't see the difference between the bid and the ask. That's good. Um, same with the NASDAQ. That's good. I don't know if it's because of lack of, um, of, uh, lack of um, volume, but it looks pretty tight in there. So these, these are looking pretty good. There's some spread cost on the WTI. It's very tiny, nothing compared to what you saw in the spread cost of some of the pairs I showed in the world of Forex. So again, these, these packages get sent out every six hours or at least a courtesy email. Um, and uh, they can be useful uh, for you, for your analysis. Hopefully you uh, got something out of that. Let me know. Talk to you later.